Another common control structure in programming languages is the for loop. So you've probably worked with for loops in your previous programming experience. It's worth looking at the ones in Scala because there are some differences. In particular, the for loop is technically a for comprehension. And I need to explain what exactly that means. So we wrote a while loop that counted up to 10. Let's go ahead and write a for loop that counts to 10. For i, and this arrow is often read as n. So for i in 1, 2, 10, print line i. There we go. There is a loop that will count from 1 to 10. Now technically my while loop counted from 0 to 9. I could change this from 0 to 9, or I could use the until instead. To and until are actually methods on integers. Uh, they produce things called ranges. Um, so it's not, those aren't built into the language, those are just aspects of the Scala library. And it turns out that the only for loop in Scala is what in Java would be called a for each loop. It always runs through a collection. Whereas Java has standard C style loops that are basically just prettied up while loops that have a boolean condition in them, Scala does not have that style of, of for loop. Instead you have a for loop where you put a generator like this where you have something that comes from a collection. Turns out you can have more than just this. Uh, in addition to having a uh, a generator like this, you can also put in conditionals. So now this wouldn't necessarily be the best way to do this, but what if I only wanted to do, uh, I only want to print things that are divisible by either three or five in here. So if I modulo three is zero or I modulo five is zero. Okay. Notice that when I put the if inside of the four, I do not have to put parentheses around the conditional. Also, I separated this with a semicolon. We'll see an alternate syntax for doing this in just a second after I've done a little bit more. Let's run that. The only things that are multiples are zero, three, prints out zero, three, six, nine. Those are all multiples, oh, I i modulo i is never going to be 5. i modulo 5 should be equal to 0. I'm missing a 5 in here from earlier. Okay, there we go. So multiples of 3 and 5 uh, get printed out there. In addition, you can put multiple generators. So I could also have a j that goes from 1 to 3. Actually, let's go ahead and just to show that we can do it, let's go from a to c and I'm going to print line I plus J. You can see that for every one of the inputs we had before, I get all three letters. So this is kind of like nesting the two for loops as far as how much things happen. I could put another conditional in there. I could also introduce variables. So let's say I wasn't really interested in I, I wanted I squared and I was going to use it multiple times or I wanted to use it in some conditional, I could put inside of here sqr equals i times i. And now I could use the value sqr both inside the loop and in subsequent things inside of the for loop. Now you can tell this is starting to get a little bit long and for that reason there is an alternate syntax that is used a lot. If I replace the parentheses with curly braces I don't need semicolons anymore, and so it is actually quite standard. You can, by the way, put new lines in there while you have parentheses, but you do have to have the semicolons. If you use curly braces, you can get rid of the semicolons and um, instead just put new lines in between them. So this is a common syntax, a style that people will use for this. Now, this is using the for as a statement because it is doing something, it's printing something, it's not really giving us back anything. I said before that basically all the other control structures could be used as expressions. In order to use the for as an expression, we put the keyword yield 
in here. Now this is going to yield something very uninteresting because print line gives us back unit. If I were going to do this, I'd probably take and make a tuple. And let's see, val stuff equals that. And then I could do, I could print out all the stuff. Uh, sure, let's just do print line stuff. We'll see what that looks like. There we go. I got this thing called a vector, which is just kind of a sequence of stuff uh, that has all of my tuples that we would have printed out. So 0, A, B, and C, 3, A, B, and C, 5, A, B, and C, etc. Okay, so hopefully this makes it clear the for loop in Scala is actually probably much more than what you had with loops. If you're coming from a Python environment and you've done list comprehensions, the for comprehension actually has a lot more in common with the list comprehensions as far as what you can do with it. Uh, we'll talk later about the kind of some of the other options here and, and really what the for loop itself is is really doing. But it's much more powerful than just a simple looping structure and it does have the ability to work as an expression and give you back values.